Yep. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to Relax Time yeah. Radio. It's um the Sunday show, so when it's yes. going out, it's evening. But yes. we're recording it in the afternoon on Saturday, so it's. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> How so are I'm, you? I'm good, Lily. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, glad to be back on radio again. Yeah. Today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. I, I love your new painting. We were talking about Thank penguins you. last week, uh, two weeks ago, right? Yeah. 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 And as I noticed that on our uh, Relax Time Facebook page, somebody shared the your, you know, when you posted about the um, two weeks ago, you yeah. had a picture of the penguin, of, pen yeah. of penguins. Yes. Somebody just shared it yesterday or day before on his page, one of the listeners, which is yeah. great. And said penguins. <laughs> so I thought, we'll just have penguins. Well, I mean, it dep depends how you feel about the, you know, the copyright of your work. Maybe you could take a photo of your penguins and we can use that as a cover for our thing today. <laughs> I think, well, I, that's up to you. That's up to you. That's up to you. Go well, ahead. I put it online anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We could. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's been so hot, but you know, I hope it cools down soon. Actually, actually, that's a bad idea because our topic today right. is not is not penguins and animals and cute animals. No, no. What's our What's our topic today? You found You found it. So, yeah, the uh, uh, the benefits of uh, puzzle solving, the surprising benefits. Uh, well, you could make you could just you know do you play do any puzzles at all? Um, I used to play a lot. I used to play go and chess. Quite a lot ah, back, okay. back in the okay. days when I had the bird's nest with uh, Bob, but nowadays, nowadays I don't think I pl I don't think I play any. Um, yeah. Hmm, yeah. I do the occasional. I mean, I do crossword puzzle. Before the virus and the traveling stops, stopped. You know, when I'm at outs or while I'm waiting for something or I'm somewhere waiting, you know, I always have a crossword puzzle book with me. Mm. And I enjoy the odd uh, jigsaw puzzle when it's in front of me, you know. Yeah, I used to love all fun. of this. Yeah, I used to love jigsaws, all sorts of puzzles. Um, there was a time when I was trying to learn how to do the uh, the Rubik's Cube. Oh, I got, I, I got almost I all the way. I got almost, I could oh. like at one point I could do about five sides, but now I've forgotten <laughs> how that happened. I could never, never get it. I mean, up to now, people are doing it in seconds. You know, kids are yeah. doing it in seconds. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Not the way my brain works, <laughs> I guess. Uh, actually, no, actually, I remembered wrong. I think I learned to do it. There's a, there's a YouTube video for everything. So you can actually, you can actually watch. If you go and search how to solve a uh, Rubik's Cube, yeah. there's a YouTube video. And actually, if you follow the video, anybody can do it. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. If you follow the video. Been too lazy. <laughs> so are you? Um. So did you used to do cr some crossword uh, jig jigsaw puzzles too? Um. Not for a long, long time. Not really. When I was yeah, a kid. Because just when I was a kid. Yeah, but apparently it's not such a kid thing. Um, adults are doing it. Uh, yeah. You do do yeah. that a lot. Yeah, and I know that at this time of in this day and time when you know there's so much tech. No, you got your iPhone, your computers, and all, and the games on computers. You tend to about analog games like this, mm. but actually, you can, you know, like crossword puzzles. You can already play on on your con computer again. Right. You know, go to sites and do that. But yeah, so apparently, adults and uh, not just for kids, adults are enjoying it, and because there are benefits apart from the fun factor or the chill factor, you know, which is already a healthy benefit, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. Well, well, we'll get into it. Uh, other than yeah. so, we'll get into the topic in a second, a bit more. Um, but we're also going to be playing um, some requests. Uh, how many we have? Like, just is it just two, two. requests? Two. Yeah. yeah, one from uh, John in Australia and one from P. Oak. In, uh, I th he's from Chiang Mai, but I think he's in Bangkok right now. Yeah, I, I remember he's requested stuff before. So P. Oak has requested Happy by Fer Pharrell Williams. Yeah, that's a fun song. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and uh, what's John requested? 
uh, I think slightly hungover. I think. By, yeah, slightly yeah. hungover by Blues Delight, and there was another song. Yeah. I don't know if that was from John or from you. Um, oh yeah, just myself. from me. I just yeah found it. So I like it. So you know, if we could, we can, can include it in the list. Yeah. So we're also going to be playing. Um, there's a new song. I. I'll, Whenever Gregory Potter has a new song, I always play it. Um, and I love it. Gregory Potter, <laughs> yeah. So he has a new yeah. song called Phoenix, so we'll be playing that. And then uh, one of my favorite bass players, the Brazilian bass player Michael, Michael Pivoquinha, has a new song. It's um, an yeah. okay. instrumental song, but it's beautiful. Okay. And also, we were just talking about it's um, Keith Jarrett, Keith. the great jazz pianist Keith Jarrett's birthday today. So yeah, I, think, I think today, I think yeah, that's right. Yeah, was it yesterday? No, I think it's today. Okay, well, Saturday though. So it'll be yesterday yeah. by the time the radio show goes out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. And I was just listening to um, someone explain the way he did chord progressions. Most jazz pianists tend to do the sort of 2 5 1 chord progression. Um, Keith Jarrett does this sort of. Uh, something else which goes in the other direction it goes so it goes around the circle of fourths the jazz musicians will understand this maybe wow. uh, but he goes okay. the other way but, but anybody's ear would recognize it because the kind of sound you get is um is a sort of more gospel sound a churchy sound so it's a different a very different feeling that anybody would recognize if you heard it you know two five one sounds like one kind of thing and uh, this sounds like something else so i don't know i'll try and find a song that uh, is a good example of this of okay great playing. yeah that sounds great. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. All right. So in the video, it's just going to be uh, me and Lily talking about our topic of the day. And in um, the radio show, um, but sorry. So if you want to listen to the music and you're listening to us on YouTube, uh, down there in the description of the video, I'll yep. post a playlist and it'll have all the songs. You can just listen to them. Um, yeah. If you want to listen to the whole show, well, you'd have to be on the radio. If you're on the radio now, the music's coming up. Yeah, which you will give uh, tomorrow, the app, to, the radio app to listen to. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. To that's whole... right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I noticed, I noticed app... sometimes those radio apps don't work. I don't know why, like just sometimes, mm. maybe they, the connection is bad or I don't know what happens. But um, yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, 93.25 yeah. FM always works so <laughs> if you happen to be in, Th in Thailand. <laughs> I to Google, you know, I tend to search a few other apps and see, what, you know, see which one I can get in sometimes. I, I don't know, just to be safe. Yeah, no, I try, safe. yeah, I've tried a few different ones. Um, but I remember one week I was trying to listen to the show and I tried about five different apps and none of them worked. No. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so I guess yeah. it just depends on the feed and the connection and everything, yeah. Okay, so I guess we can get into our topic. Yeah, so we were talking about the amazing benefits of uh, puzzle solving. Yeah. So it's not just for kids. Uh, one of the big things, I guess, is improved memory, especially uh, short-term memory. Apparently, for example, jigsaw puzzles are really good at, uh, for improving short-term memory, which helps us, you know, because we have to remember shapes and see the big picture and plan how yep. things might fit into a bit, you know, the whole picture. Um, so actually this thing, you know, simple things like that, sometimes you don't realize what you're doing, you're sort of exercising your mind. Right. Yeah. Um, well, sometimes I do realize that my short-term memory is strengthening or weakening. Like for example, since the advent of smartphones, I don't have to remember um, phone numbers anymore. Phone numbers. So, my memory now for remembering things like phone numbers, so short strings of digits is much worse than it used to be. I, I, you know, yeah. like I, I was aware before that I had this like space in my brain that could store, you know, a bunch of numbers and now it's like capacity is gone. <laughs> so yeah, I, so yeah. right puzzles and all, I just, uh, the different things that we do have an impact for sure on, on aspects of our memory. Um, yeah. Uh Sorry. So, no, no, I was just going to say, yeah, because I was looking at the article you sent me and then um, I was, so this article like begins looking at um, especially jigsaws, right? But I guess it's talking about all sorts of puzzles too. Though, all right? sorts of, yeah, puzzles. 
puzzle. At first, I was actually looking for something about jigsaw puzzles, you know, but and this article is more general. You know, I came across this article, it's more general. I mean, it does talk a lot about jigsaw puzzles, but it, it says puzzles on a whole, you know, because they help reinforce certain connections in within the brain, in our brain cells and create new ones. And that all that helps to increase mental speed and your thought processes. So maybe that will help. I mean, they think scientists seem to think that that, you know, the, in the article they said that this helps with your memory, the process, and you know, especially short-term memory. Right. So yeah, maybe I need to try that. I do forget. You know, it's like you you you. Sometimes you you think you are do, going to do something and you two steps you walk two steps and <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Is that age maybe <laughs> maybe oh yeah or it might not be age it might just be the fact that we've uh, stopped doing the things we used to do when we were kids you know like playing puzzles and whatever. Yeah, um, I agree with your point about how uh, mobiles and all that help making you think you know, as what you know, more quickly or, or try to remember things harder. But my 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 mom, my parents are of the generation where they can still they can recite phone numbers, uh still. I mean I used to be able to do that but I can't anymore, but they still can. So you yeah. know they kept that. Although they yeah they also have their phones. <laughs> yeah right. Anyway. Um some other so, things I saw Sorry, what were you going to say? Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Continue, please. Uh, um, yeah, so some other kinds of skills um, that the article is saying, like, you know, not just memory and short-term memory, but problem-solving skills, which is, uh, that's some, so it's suggesting that, you know, the skills that we need in everyday life like and working life, especially, um, often require, like, critical thinking, problem-solving skills, and that puzzles can help us to... Uh, you know, be, build up creativity in our problem solving. Um, you know, th there is, make us more flexible and creative in problem solving. Yeah, because you have to try to think in ways to solve a problem, right? If, when presented with a puzzle, for example, you're, you're thinking, oh, can I do this? Can I put this piece here? Can I, you know, approach it this way? What, what, depending on what puzzle you're doing. You know, I'm sure you experienced that in Go and, you know, I don't play and do that. Right. Yeah, I used to, um, I used to play Go quite a lot and, and chess. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And, and it's mentally tiring. Like, for example, recently I was listening to um, Gary Kas Kasparov talking about when he used to play Grandmaster Chess. And they have to eat. They have to eat an incredible amount of food before um, a chess tournament because the brain burns the brain burns, like apparently normally the brain, like just in normal everyday life, the brain burns about 20% of their body's energy. But when they're playing like a chess tournament, it's burning 60% and they can burn through thousands of calories. So uh, is it because they're thinking so much or trying to plan? Yeah, or? because they're thinking so much. I mean, literally, you know, when you're, you know, playing chess or you're playing Goa and you're sort of, mapping the you're sort of mapping the future in your head you're visualizing the future which is like arrangements of pieces and moves ahead and this kind of thing and obviously it's it involves you know large parts of the brain brain and working together and it's, it's all using energy and the brain consumes a tremendous amount of energy wow. and, all, and also you have you know you have to sort of devote areas of the brain into which you can sort of yeah in, into which you can imagine so I think th those are uh, chess and go. I, I don't know if they're qu quite extreme examples. Maybe other kinds of games too, you know, require you to look like f far into the future and analyze sort of complex, complex things. Uh, some, I, I know, like a friend of mine, um, when, back when I was, you know, in the bird's nest, when I had the bird's nest cafe, a friend of mine was a, a board games player. He was a collector. He had thousands yeah, yeah. and he would bring them from, he was from New Orleans and he would bring them. He, he was the one that taught me and uh, Opa to play Go. And he taught us many, many other games. And I saw that now um, in Chiang Mai, like back at the time, I don't remember seeing them, but now apparently in Chiang Mai, there's quite a lot of um, yeah. board games, sh cafes. Yeah. Certainly one I mean, newer. Yeah. Sorry. 
apparently there's one group that Peter used to play regularly here every Wednesday or something. Um, for, you know, interested people can join in, but I it's the virus, you know, the lockdown. I guess they stopped yeah. for now. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Like uh, that something like board games would make a comeback when video games have been dominating for so long. But the board games thing yeah. is kind of it's got a social side to it that's a bit different from the video games. I mean, in the video games, uh, people do, get, they're kind of like, they're a little bit social because nowadays people have a microphone and, um, you know, they're talking to the game player. They're talking to other game players when they're playing. So it's not like there's no like social element, but it's kind of, you know, there's still the wall of um, the screen and, and you're kind of like in your cubicle sort of thing, in your cubicle mode, yeah. whereas the board games, you go to a cafe, you maybe like drink tea or coffee or whatever. And sort of, there's probably like some other kind of conversation going on around the, around the game. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I liked it. I certainly enjoyed like playing games back when, uh, you know, I had the time. Maybe I didn't have the time to do it. Maybe I was just avoiding my <laughs> responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I, in Australia, because my partner, you know, is Australia, I, there are families who always get together, who get together regularly in the evenings after dinner or, or to play board games. And some are pretty complicated. And I have to understand some of the game bit And so I just have no idea because I don't have that kind of... I'm not a board game person, but I'm learning bits and pieces. And, and I see that people are thinking all the time, figuring out what's the next move. It's not always as simple. Even trying to fit, uh, yeah, I guess trying to solve a puzzle or trying to get to a place mm. or to a future state, you know, they have to plan for it and strategize. So, yeah, well, I guess wow. it's just different, different skills because you do crosswords and I've always been terrible at crosswords. Uh, I, I, you know, I've never tried to get good at crosswords, but every time I try them, I sort of uh, get stuck and give up really quickly. Uh, so, you, what what is it about crosswords that you like? It forces me to think, and I, I you know, I used to write a lot more than I do now, but uh, mm. it helps increase my vocabulary. It does force me to think of synonyms of different words for the same word. You know, you tend to, mm. in everyday life, just end up using the simplest words, uh, you know, just one or two words. And then you realize when, when faced with a task, trying to figure out, and, uh, you know, like according to the crossword, like five squares for a word, and you're thinking, hmm, what, what does it mean? You know, another word for a synonym, another word for this or that. You know, so you, it, gets your yeah. it just helps me to plus it passes time. And sometimes I cheat. <laughs> uh, oh, well, I mean, if you're looking for ways to cheat, I found something you, you might like. Um, I found a, a thesaurus, a really cool thesaurus called powerthesaurus.org. And it's a, so it's a .org wow. and it's a sort of user-built, user-built thesaurus. Now, I, like I use a thesaurus because I'm translating from, you know, Thai to English. And sometimes I'm looking for just, yeah, the perfect word. And I've used, you know, yep uh different thesaurus programs apps on my phone and whatever but this this um website powerthesaurus.org is different it has like it has so many more ideas and because it's built by people and not yeah. it's built by you you know like users modern users not just yeah, sort of like um academics kind of thing. yeah so it's got like a it sometimes finds suggestions that never are in any other uh you know more established thesaurus. So, yeah, um, okay. I don't I'll know. Check it out. Check it out Thank if you're you. ever looking for yeah. a way to cheat in a oh. crossword. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, maybe we shouldn't be talking about that. <laughs> okay, back to the topic. Yeah. It's also, apparently, when uh, you can get uh, one of the benefits uh, is in visual spatial reasoning. So if that sounds like a big thing. Uh, anyway, it's when solving a, a jigsaw puzzle. So we had you because we're looking at different pieces and figuring out how they fit in the, within the bigger picture. So yeah. apparently, doing this regularly helps improve your your visual spatial reasoning. So when you, when, what you see and how you fit into a certain space, I suppose that's one of the things. The, the coordination that's that's involved. Yeah. And this kind of skill 
it apparently helps with everyday tasks like uh, driving a car when you park or when you're switching lanes and you know whether you can fit into a certain lane or not or packing how many things to pack into a bag you know yeah. um, or, and apparently and for even using a map uh, uh, apparently that this helps I'm not sure how at the moment but I guess mm -hmm. yeah you're looking at uh, yeah def definitely definitely what do you think about that uh, well, yeah, definitely map, map reading is um, one of the skills that you definitely have to learn. It doesn't come automatically. Uh, so I'm sure, yeah, I did, I did puzzles when I was a kid. I, I built Lego, uh, I, yeah, that kind of thing. And I've never had a problem, n never had much of a problem reading maps. But I can tell, you know, some people, sometimes you run into a person and you show them a map and to you it just makes sense and they, they can't figure out, um, yeah. you know. So, it, yeah, I can easily believe it would be like, really useful. Okay. Um, um, I saw one more, uh, like I saw one thing that um, a, a researcher from the University of Michigan found that I, uh, adults could boost their IQ by up to four points by spending 25 minutes a game a day playing puzzle puzzles. Oh, that's not bad. 20 that's not a lot of time. What, four points? Hmm. Uh, four points. Well, it doesn't sound, I don't know. I don't know if that sounds like a lot or not, but uh, yeah. still, it's just, it's something. Yeah, true. No. But for, I'm, for me, because maybe I'm getting older, I'm just thinking about the dementia and Alzheimer's and memory loss and apparently things like that. Uh, puzzles help you because it keeps your mind active, right? It keeps you thinking and reasoning and trying to remember uh, or trying to uh, pro problem solve. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah. I've come across this one before. Like this, this is the more difficult, this is the more difficult one to understand. Um, puzzles and games and Alzheimer's because like here's the, this, the research is like a little bit confusing. So for example, they say if you start, if you play puzzles and games and keep the mind active before the onset of Alzheimer's, then it can delay the onset. But once someone, I mean, this is what I just, I'm reading from this article that you found. Once someone's already uh, started to develop yes. Alzheimer's, mm. then it doesn't help anymore. That's what's in actual in actual yeah. fact that that article was like confusing. In other words, I followed the link. There was a link from this article to the WebMD page, and the WebMD yeah. page didn't really say the same thing as the article. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it basically said that um, in actual fact, if you started if you started playing puzzles after the development of Alzheimer's symptoms, then things got worse. Uh, when when you decline faster, oh um, wow! So that's confusing. But basically, basically, I've read before in other places that, um, for example, there's one famous case of a professor of, I think he was a professor of maths at Oxford University or something, and he was also a very strong chess player, and he sort of went to his doctor uh, because he'd noticed that he was having trouble thinking ahead in chess as many moves as he used to be able to, and. Um, you know, he would never have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's because even I think even until the end of his life, he he didn't um, present any symptoms like other people. But when they when he di when he died, uh, they did an autopsy and found that his brain had all the signs of uh, Alzheimer's. But he'd known it because oh. he was playing chess and he couldn't play to the same level as he used to. Yeah. So so I, I, for me, this one's like a confusing one whether. Um, it kind of uh, su studies suggest perhaps it can delay the onset, but it doesn't necessarily um, solve the problem. Alzheimer's is a, is a tricky one. Probably, yeah, yeah. I think that you know requires a lot more research. And yeah, a lot of research is uh, on a way to, to to stop this. Well, any, in any case, you know, even if you play puzzles, sometimes you can improve your mood if you're feeling down, or either make you really uh, <laughs> aggravated. It happens both. It can both of those can happen. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> or the, yeah, you could either increase your or lower your stress level. Who knows? 
but maybe it helps to there are other benefits like increasing your self confidence probably because you're able to solve um simple or difficult uh puzzles you know yeah i i, I it's a great way to spend your time right now especially when we are spend much time at home and people are tired of just looking at the computer or on a mobile you know can find some create some, your own puzzles you can make your own puzzles what what about um like computer games or computer based puzzles do you play like i guess what do you have you ever played any computer games eh uh, yeah simple stuff a long time ago not you know mm. eh. I'm embarrassed to say what games they are, but you know, just simple stuff, you know, just for fun to wall away the time. But yeah. I, I, I tend to like, I mean, sometimes when I can't sleep, for me, it's more puzzles. So if I don't have the book, I mean, I usually buy a crossword book and that I carry. But if I don't, I go online to to um, mm. look for crossword puzzles and just play. I might have to get back um, into. I might have to get back into something because I've just realized that I'm not playing any games. That seems a bit wrong somehow. <laughs> yeah, mind. because I mean, uh, I think studies uh, have shown that, uh, like, for example, they learn better through games. So if you want, maybe for, it also helps us to focus whether you're adult or kid, you know. I think if you have a bit of more fun, you know, you're you are in the context of play and pick things up better. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Now I've realized what's going on. Okay. Uh, for me, when I'm practicing like uh, my flute or saxophone, that's, that's like a puzzle. Because yeah. when you're practicing some musical idea, like, you know, for, Im for imagine you have like one musical idea and you try to play it through 12 keys and the fingering is different, you know, in every key. Um, depends on the instrument. You know, sometimes on a guitar, the fingering doesn't change very much. But um, mm -hmm. on a piano, the fingering is going to change. On a flute and saxophone, the fingering changes a lot. So actually, that's a puzzle. And your brain it is, treats uh, it as a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good way of seeing it. Yeah, I think because we tend to think even when I paint, I have to plan the composition and, and colors and all that. So those are puzzles too for me, you know, so I guess we, we can expand it to so many things in our daily lives. Yeah. You know, solving puzzles, solving well, problem solving, I guess. Well, think about the early um, Renaissance artists. There was a time when um, painters didn't paint um, three-dimensional perspective very well, right? That, that, that was something that, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. people like Leonardo yeah. da Vinci and uh, they worked on with cameras. They, 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 developed, they were using like Cameras, cameras, yeah, like th developing like pinhole cameras to to work out how to do perspective. So it it must that that kind of thing is uh, must be a puzzle. A, yeah, a skill, I, yeah, yeah. In a way, I, when I, mean, I yeah, when I started reading, I think I didn't realize that we go this way. We've gone another way. Maybe we're being clever. <laughs> I mean, with lateral thinking a bit. There all kinds of puzzles, you know, not just maybe physical games like jigsaws or crosswords. You know, other things like you do in, in music or in art or, so, you know, some another field that you need to always figure out things. You know, are yeah. all puzzles. Even making a little origami is a puzzle, isn't it? How to fold and how to make it stand properly. Right. Uh, mm. Yeah, right. Now, now origami. Origami is like somehow huge in the world now because um, it's been like a lot of um, research these days is done on uh, folding proteins and folding molecules, and they use the same principles. Oh. They use the, they use the same sort of um, principles that um, you know were devised in origami. Maybe we can talk about that a bit more next time. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm going. Uh, that's a bit crazy. <laughs> Um, no, 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 no. I think it's it's great. I I've been to a design exhibition in Singapore where they look like origami toys. They look like toys, but actually it's all a feat of engineering and all. And they're applying all these different principles, right? From nature, from origami foldings, and you know that to to for to create things for to help people who need this. Uh, you know, 
so you you don't know you maybe a game or a little simple thing like you're doing a puzzle or something may create something you know it can lead to something bigger and use that as a base to to create something better <laughs> apart from uh Apart from paper airplanes, I've never, I've never done origami. <laughs> I used to love, I used to love making paper airplanes. <laughs> I love, yeah, that was, yeah, that was well, a lot of fun. My paper, I love, my paper airplanes never flew. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> uh, funnily yeah, enough, like uh, I was just watching, because um, I, I was watching. I told you before the uh, Studio Ghibli films. One of the Studio Ghibli films was about this, um, The Wind Rises, it's about this aircraft designer. And so he's, at some point he's making this, uh, you know, paper airplane, uh, <laughs> which flew really, really well, but then he was one of the world's greatest ever aircraft designers, so. <laughs> he probably started from there because he's played with paper yeah, maybe. airplanes and maybe. build a real, a big one who can sit in and fly, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, is it time or is it more? Uh, well, we got anything left in that? Let's just see what else we got. Um, so, yeah, just from the... So, you can develop um, increased attention to detail, for example, solve, solving jigsaw puzzles. Um, yeah, that makes sense. You know, you're trying to find pieces out of thousands of pieces and um, attention to detail, yeah. definitely. Yeah, apparently also, I mean, if if you're playing this on your own, it helps you benefit, but if you're playing in a group, maybe these days we could, on, you know, on Zoom or by uh, with the videos, we play with each other. That's, oh, I know people who do that actually play. I'm here, I play, we play the same game against each other, like online video games. Um, yeah. But in normal times when we are out at, you know, people's homes or at work, maybe apparently, you know, it, it creates better collaboration if you play, the, you know, games, certain games and certain puzzles, try to solve things together. Yeah, I think I'd like to, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take up, I, I really enjoyed um, Go, but it, it takes a long time. Uh, I think that's the problem. Like, do you, I wonder, like, Jigsaws, that's kind of something, um, that you can do at home whenever you have time, right? I mean, uh, doing a jigsaw. But I suppose, like one problem I yeah, one problem I found with the way that the world is today is, uh, you know, when I used to play Go a lot, you you can get you can just lose like five hours of a day playing, I don't know, two games or something, you know, just two games, just two or three games of Go really does take a long time uh so maybe i have to like look for something look for something puzzling like a crossword yeah crossword's better because you can just do little bits here and there right yeah yeah maybe so that, i no? sorry because when I, I i can't think of the word i go away and i you know maybe an hour later or a day later i come back and you know suddenly it's clear for me what the word is you know hmm. Yeah, like jigsaw puzzles and certain games. Yeah, you can stop uh, and at leisure. I mean, you can play at leisure. You know, stop and start again whenever, and take your time. Um, okay, so do you know where? Like, uh, do you know where any of the um, games, the board games cafes are in Chiang Mai? Uh, I saw that. Um, just... Yeah, I have to search. I know one of the singer, uh, one of the harmonica players. Uh, oh. Has a game. I have to uh, search. Well, I know there's one. There's at least one in Niman. Um, there's one in Santikam, not far from where I live. Just um, oh, let's see. Uh, well, it's on Santikam Road. You know, Santikam Road, not not too far from the temple. Uh, and in Niman, I forget where. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to look it up. Perhaps I. Perhaps I'll post the link. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, po I'll post the link. Uh, board game cafes in Chiang Mai. Uh, because I think City okay, Life have yeah, a, yeah. City, City Life have an article on it. I think this they have an article with maybe oh, like right. five cafes. Yeah, yeah. For those who are interested, yeah, when things are better, when we are allowed to socialize again within uh, par certain parameters, it would yeah, right. probably be fun to go for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, All right. Thanks, Lily. Well, in time.
Yeah, thank you, Paul. In the meantime, stay safe. Put on your mask when you go out, even though it's so hot. <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's so hot. Yeah. Yeah, but be safe anyway. Yeah, I, I, I do definitely. All right. Um, so this has been Relax Time Radio broadcasting on Radio Thailand Chiang Mai. Uh, this is the Sunday show. Hope you enjoyed the music. Playlist is down there. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed our topic of conversation. I'll post a link to um, where the board game cafes in Chiang Mai are. You can have a look. Okay. Okay, there. cool. And right. uh, that's it from, from me. And me. <laughs> we'll All see right. you again soon. Yeah. Anyway, oh. Have fun Bye. at home. <laughs> Bye.